Hey, Prime Timers, what's going on? It's Dominic, the Prime Time Treasure Hunter. Thanks for coming by to check out another video. I am super excited wearing my comic book shirt because I can't wait to show you the first ever item that I sold on eBay in the thousand dollar price range. And yes, it does happen to be a comic book. I'm going to show it to you in a moment. A lot of people have been messaging me that they want to learn more about comics. So this video should help with this particular issue that I'm going to show you. But even if you're not interested in comic books, you don't ever plan on doing it, you should still stay and watch this video because I'm going to pass on some tips and strategies for how you could find high dollar items like this in whatever area it is that you sell so that you could try to find those and flip them as well. And telling the story about how I obtained this um, could help kind of share that information with you. So uh, let me show you what the item is right here. It's giant size X-Men number one. That is the actual sale price, $1,250. Literally sold it within about five minutes of putting it up. Uh, I know I had the price exactly right. The person actually had offered me $11.50 and I didn't respond and then instantly like in about 30 seconds later just bought it. Just, you know, didn't want anyone else to get it. So uh, Giant Size X-Men number one is really one of the holy grails of comic books. Pretty much every comic book collector would like to have this book in their collection in some shape or form. And the reason why it's important is it's the first appearance of the new X-Men, who you could see right here in color, right in the front of the book. And there's the old X-Men in the back, and they battle it out later on. And it's a very interesting storyline and stuff. And the X-Men, as you know, are very popular now because, uh, I mean, they've always been popular, but they're even more popular due to the popularity of the Marvel uh, movies that include the X-Men in it. It's also uh, of relevance the second appearance of Wolverine. So if you don't know about comics, that character right there on the bottom right is Wolverine. Now, something you need to know, because with a book like this, when you're dealing with a Holy Grail issue or what we call a key issue in comic books, is that the value is going to be largely determined by the condition of the book. And so you'll see here that I put that it's in fine condition, which if you're new into comics and grading, that might sound like it's great. What basically that means, it's what we would call mid-grade. And you can see I actually say that mid-grade. Near mint, very fine, that would be kind of high grade. This is mid-grade, which means that there's a mild to moderate degree of damage to the book. Now, if you look at it right here, it doesn't look necessarily too obvious because the, the uh, cover is nice and bright. A lot of times, I actually just saw one in a comic store this week, the, the, the cover uh, for this issue was, was quite dull. This is nice and bright. That's something that's going to be a selling point on it is the brightness of the cover. But what takes away some of the value of this book is that you see that there's some uh, creasing and indentations, more indentations uh, on the top corner there to the left. You're really going to have to zoom in to see it, but trust me, it's there. And it does course throughout the book. And there's some wear on the spine, not huge, but there is some creasing there. I show it in some other pictures. Uh, I'm going to show like right here as well. There you could see it a little bit more. You see all those creases on the side? You've got some there. You've got some there. That takes away value. Now, this is a common problem with these thicker books that they made, these 64 pages and stuff, the annuals, the giant sizes. Uh, it's very difficult to find ones that don't have some degree of damage on the spine. Or another thing that was common, uh, is common with these books is that they use these very thick, uh, large staples to staple all the books together. And what happens is that when you uh, press down uh, the cover on top of it, there's usually a staple impression that comes through the book. Uh, not necessarily all the way through the book, but it you know kind of pushes out a little bit. So that's another issue that happens. So it's very difficult to find a book like this in near mint condition, but they are out there uh, and they do exist. So uh, let me tell you the story about how I found this. And this is some of the lessons uh, that are important for, for getting these types of high value items. So I did a video and I'm going to link to it in the end. It's an old video. It's, it's one that I did a few months after I started my YouTube channel. It's called How to Source for Your Reselling Business in the Winter. And I actually did get this item in the dead of winter along with a lot of other items. And I did it by posting. And if you could watch this video, if you want to see 
the exact wording that I use in the ad, but I put this ad on Craigslist that tells people that I am looking for partial estate sale contents. And that is a crucial word, partial. I'm not looking at uh, right now to buy out anyone's complete estate contents. I'm basically looking to set up a situation where someone needs to get rid of stuff and they let me come over there and pretty much cherry pick through it and get what I want. And believe it or not, there are plenty of people who take me up on that offer and reach out to me. So one day, a guy reached out to me in response to this very ad that you could watch yourself. Uh, and he, he said he has some stuff and um, it was uh, in a trailer and he wanted to know if I would be interested in it. So I said, sure, could you send me a picture? Because I like to get proof that they have uh, what they actually say they have because... Sometimes there are scams out there where people are trying to lure you somewhere and then, you know, commit a robbery or something like that. So he sent me a picture of inside the trailer. Now, when I saw the picture, initially all I saw were a lot of big items. And there were, there were furniture pieces in there. And I wrote back to him. I said, you know, I really don't do deal in like big furniture uh, pieces that I'm going to purchase. I mean, my wife, Mrs. Primetime, does some furniture restoration and stuff. But at that time, we weren't really actively going out and doing, uh, you know, getting furniture. This is about a year and a half ago. So um, he writes me back. He says, no, no, no. I told him what I was looking for. And he said, no, I have plenty of that stuff. It's just in all these bins that you see. So I said, okay. Um, let's set up a time to meet. Now, the first, before I go into the second part of this, the first general tip you need to know to get these high value items is you have to actively go out and try to find it. You cannot wait for that to, um, you know, show up sometime necessarily when you go to a garage sale or, you know, or an estate sale, you might find them there. And that is part of going after things is going to those sales. But the problem with those are those are ones where there's going to be other competition there usually competing with you for that stuff. So you want to try to set up situations where it is just you. And that's what I did in this situation by creating these Craigslist ads is they allow me to kind of corner a piece of the market and just basically be the only person interacting with this individual for the item. So it's all for me to try to look through and, and sort through and, and see if it's something that works for me. So that is the first lesson is go after it, pursue it, put out those ads and try to find something unique that could work for you. So you don't have to deal with a whole bunch of competition. So, um, uh, eventually, uh, we finally came to a day that w where we can meet up. Now, this is the second part of it because I kid you not, there were seriously 10 appointments or you know, maybe nine, maybe 11, give or take, that we had made that got canceled by him. Um, his daughter was sick. He was running late at work. Um, he got sick. He just couldn't make it over. He forgot the day. He didn't put it on the calendar. On and on and on. It just kept happening. Now, he's a nice guy. Don't get me wrong, but we just couldn't make it work in terms of scheduling. So it actually took about a month to finally get over there and get to this place. So that is my second part that is really super important. I've talked about this before, but it's the importance of being consistent and being persistent. You have to, again, go after it. So you can't just take those first two, three times where the guy says, oh, I can't meet up, I can't make it, something happen. You gotta keep going after it, especially if you think that this is something that has potential. Now, this is the guy I've talked about in a lot of other videos who worked for Got Junk. And that's very important because that's how this guy was able to get all of these items. This is just one one of the many, many items that I picked up from this guy. I mean, I literally picked up a, a two truckloads worth of stuff in the Primetime Treasure Mobile. So um, you want to try to find somebody who is detached from the financial value of what the items are that are in there. In other words, it's not somebody who you're purchasing out their personal collection. That's always much more difficult. Or if you're trying to buy from another dealer, that could be much more difficult too if they have a lot of money invested into it. But this guy worked for Got Junk, so he did estate clearouts. And what he would do is anytime he found something that he thought was valuable, he would take it and he would 
you put it in his car, and then he'd bring it to this big trailer that he had parked outside of his workplace, and he would just toss everything in the trailer. Well, eventually, the trailer wound up getting so filled that his girlfriend or fiance was bothering him and telling him, listen, you got to start clearing this out. And so he went on Craigslist and started searching for someone who would do something like this and therefore came across my ad where I'm saying, I want partial estate contents. So go to that um, video and you'll see the whole, there's a whole psychology behind how I uh, strategically set that ad up, the pictures, the images, all that kind of stuff to jump out so that someone like him would uh, contact me. So that's another tip that you could look into uh, from that video. So uh, we finally meet up and I wish I was looking for it, but I can't find the exact picture of the trailer. This was I think I had the YouTube channel up at the time, but I was experimenting with just starting out with videos and I was not doing haul videos yet. So this happened right during that time frame. But I found a picture online that very closely, this is really, really close of a representation, except just picture snow all over the ground of what I saw when we actually met up. And now you have to remember too with this that I went down a back road and there's basically lines of these trailers. There's this one and there's a whole bunch of other ones. And he basically rented out the trailer uh, at a good rate to store all of these items in. And so he gets up there, I meet him, and I've got to check this guy out because i got to make sure I'm safe. Because remember, I'm going to be stepping into this trailer and he's going to be outside of it. So I've got to be very, very careful. I would only do this if you're, you know, again, you've checked the person out. You, you think as best as you can and assess the situation that it seems safe to you. It is probably best to bring a partner with you if you can. I did not have one that I could bring. But anyway, I met up. Everything seemed okay. Kind of checked out. And um, he opened up those doors. And I just started, I started staying to the front at first just to, again, you know, if I needed to kind of get out real quick that I felt uh, that I would be able to do so. I made sure I had my phone with me. Uh, so if anything happened, I would be able to call someone to get help. But, um, now I should tell you also that when I found this comic book, this is the second trip back. I had gone there an initial time and the initial time that I went there, I spent only $50 to buy a whole big box of magic, the gathering cards and all other collectibles that he had. And, uh, you know, I basically filled up the car with it. Um, maybe not completely, but like, mm, like three quarters of the way. And he only wanted $50 for everything that night. Uh, I listed one of the Magic the Gathering boxes. It was from the early 90s, and it sold within 24 hours for $725. And that had been my highest eBay sale up until this one, which came from when I went back a second time. Now, why did I go back a second time? Well, I didn't have enough time the first time. It's a pretty big trailer, right? So uh, you need extra time to kind of go through there. And two... I asked him if he had comic books and he said he did, but he had them at home and um, they were also from an estate clear out and that he was going to bring them back the next time that we met up. And sure enough, he was true to his word. We met up. He brings one big box of comic books that is filled with all old X-Men books and all old Avengers books. I have one of those lots of Avengers books up right now in my eBay store for $1,700. And one of the books that was one of the X-Men books is uh, this one right here. And you might be wondering, why did you sit on this for a while? Well, you have to remember... I actually bought tons of stuff from this guy that have nothing to do with comic books. So I've been listing like magic cards and all sorts of vintage items and collectibles ever since that day. I mean, I filled up my my car, like I said, twice. The second time I paid up a little more because he knew there was some value in the comic books and some of the other things that I bought. So second time I wound up spending $300 for everything, which I was more than happy to pay because I had already made $725 on one of the Magic the Gathering card sets. That's why I say, I tell people I have pennies into this item, but in reality, I actually have nothing into it because if you consider the first sale and how everything went, I was already in profit by the time that I came back here and the $300 was essentially nothing. I was just using my profit money from the first uh, sale to purchase all of this stuff. So uh, that is the next point that I want to make. Again, it gets back to asking for it. You've got to 
ask if they have the certain type of item that you're looking for. So if you know in whatever niche that you sell in, it could be sneakers, it could be clothing. Uh, maybe you're looking for, maybe you're a woman who's watching this and you like um, Christian Louboutin shoes and you've always been trying to find a pair of those because you know they could sell for hundreds of dollars and stuff. So you ask every time you go, does, does anyone you know have a pair of those types of shoes? Or does anyone have certain types of uh, collectible cards that you like? Or maybe it's postcards that you're into. You get my point. Whatever it is that you're into, your mission is to ask for those kind of things, no matter where you go, no matter who it is that you're meeting up with. I just had a situation that I shared in my Facebook group where someone contacted me through the same uh, Craigslist ad who's selling me 100 salt and pepper shakers. Most of them, I think, look to be vintage. I know there's some vintage ones in there. Right? There's some newer ones. But the point is, is I asked him if he had any comic books. Now, there's a guy contacting me about salt and pepper shakers. And I posted the exact dialogue in my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, the links down below if you want to join, if you're new to my uh, channel and my social media network, uh, come by there and you'll see, I actually put the whole dialogue there and um, you'll see where I asked a guy and I say, hey, do you have comic books? And he writes, oh man, I do, I have them. He goes, uh, they're at my dad's house, I have to go back and grab them. Let's make this deal first and if everything works out okay, then maybe we can make a deal on the comic book. So that's how these things happen. Um, another thing uh, that I kind of mentioned earlier, and just to emphasize again, re remember, this guy has no personal investment in this particular comic book or any of the comic books. He found them in someone's house when he did an estate clear out. He took them. He threw them in some place in his house. They've been sitting there collecting dust in a box for all these years. He finally found someone who wants them, and he just sold it out in a bulk deal. That's what you want to do. If you want to get these high-value items, it's the best way to get it. Um, other ways to get them are from estate sale dealers who are also not personally attached. They're just trying to blow out a large amount of inventory. Liquidations are a good way. Um, if it's a family member of someone who passed away, who um, you know did a lot with collectibles, you could work out a private deal on the side with those uh, types of individuals, and that's how you could get these types of items. Another way to do it, and I emphasize this in my ads, is sometimes people have you know bad circumstances in life and they're strapped for cash and they need to get cash quick, and they have collectibles. Well, then they will be motivated to sell that to you because they want to get quick cash. So if you could advertise yourself as someone who could provide someone quick cash you know, in exchange for you know something that has uh, you know high value, they don't have the time to wait for that person to long tail an item like you necessarily necessarily will. Then they'll flip it uh, quick to you. Now you might say, um, oh, you know what? I don't know anything about comic books, so how would I know if I grab this comic book if I saw it in a box like that that it had any value? How would I research it? Well, one thing you could do is you could just go to eBay and you could check eBay and just type in giant size X-Men number one and sort from highest to lowest. And uh, this might blow your mind if you're new into comic books, but this right here, you could see what a graded 9.6. So this is in the near mint uh, range. It's graded, it's certified. So it's in a plastic slab. That's what you're seeing there. In fact, I'll, I'll click on it to bring it up, but it sold at auction uh, with 43 bids, I believe for uh, $7,200. That's $7,200 for a single comic book in a slab. And that has to do with it being near mint condition and again, the type of book that it is. But that is not a one-off. That is not unique. Look as we scroll down. So everything you see in green, it means that it's sold, 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 sold. Look at this. They almost all of them sell. And if it didn't sell that time, so it's in black, it's going to sell when the person puts it back up the second time. The vast majority of these are sold. Now, there's another site that I have talked about a lot that you could go to to get a quick sense of what the value of comic books are. They don't always match up to what the market value is, so you have to check that. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, they could be off, sometimes under, sometimes they're off over. So you always have to check the current market rates. But this is a site I love to use, I rely on it a lot. It's called uh, comicspriceguide.com. You've heard me talk about it a lot. I'll put the link down in the description section. But here you could see uh, I had typed in the Uncanny X-Men series, uh, Uncanny X-Men, and then it brings you to the, um, the title. You click on the title. And in fact, let me just 
I'll just backtrack here so you can see what I'm uh, talking about right here. So it's Uncanny X-Men series from 1963 to uh, 2001, and it will bring up a tab, and unfortunately it's spinning right now, but the tab will show you, you could look up the regular issue, uh, you could look up the giant size issues, here it is, it's just a little slow there coming up there. But um, it'll bring the annuals, any specials, or giant sizes. Now, we have giant size number one, so we want to click on giant size, what I'll do in a moment. But the reason why I like this, um, this for comic books is if you have a whole bunch of comic books, like a whole bunch of X-Men, which I do from him. I have. I just sold one of them today for $110, X-Men 97. It's right behind me uh, on, the, on the mantle. I've got to ship that one out later. Um, there's a whole stack of them. If you want to quickly look through them, and you can see here, X-Men number one in near mint condition, $44,000 book. It's insane. Um, scroll down, and it'll tell you the important things that happened in the issue, which you could put in your ad. So I love doing that. It's very, very helpful to do. But you could scroll down really quick. Rather than typing in each individual comic book in eBay, it's a quick way to scan and say, all right, I have this stack of 50 books. How do I tell which one has the potential to have high value so that I could then look into it some more on eBay comps? But I'm going to check on a giant size because there's one other thing I want to show you uh, before um, wrapping the video up. And I will have one more tip for you in just a moment. But you can see here, this is Giant Size X-Men number one. I'm going to click on it for you. And, uh, oops, that's the uh, picture. We don't want just the picture. We want the actual um, listing that will tell you what it's worth by uh, by the grade. So you can see here it tells you the raw value and then the graded value. Graded value means if it's in one of those plastic slabs, you sent it off to a company like CGC to grade it. People ask me a lot, should I get my comic book graded? Here's my answer to that question. It depends. My comic book is worth, um, and you can see here it matches up. I said it was in fine condition. That was my own uh, judgment on it in terms of, you know, based on my experience with grading. So that's a 6.0 fine condition. And it tells you here that that should be worth around $1,200. That actually matched up very well with the market rate because the market rate it sold for a $1,250. Now, if I went and got it graded and if it was in a slab, it would be worth about $1,300 according to this guide. So it's about $93 more. Does that make it worth sending it out? Spending, in this case, would be hundreds of dollars to wind up getting it graded. Absolutely not. It would take a lot of time to get back unless you spent extra money to get it expedited to you. It's totally not worth it. Now, you could find right now, um, you know, as of it's uh, August 30th, uh, 2019, you could find that book sell in graded uh 6.0 condition for $1,500, but still that's not worth it. But let me show you where it would be worth it. Let's say you had this book in, you know, in near mint condition. Uh, well, you know, you could see here raw value is, you know, $3,400. Well, here, it, and it's going to be hard to see because the font is small. I'll even try to highlight it. Well, it's $5,600 as a 9.6 if it's, um, if it's, if it's graded. So, uh, there, you're you're talking about two thousand dollar price difference. So there could be worth it. Now, if you start getting into these crazy numbers like ten, which is gem mint, which is almost impossible to find, you could see the the values are even greater. They're almost astronomical. It's almost you know it's more than double the value. Seven thousand for a raw, eighteen thousand six hundred dollars for graded. But again, don't even focus on nine point nine or ten point oh. They exist, but they're almost impossible to find. So I wouldn't even consider it but 9.8s are out there and look at the difference with a 9.8 so this is a near mint slash mint comic book four thousand three hundred dollars if it's not graded certified slabbed eleven thousand dollars if it is so those are situations now the thing is you need to be confident and you need to know something about comic book grading uh, which yes i know i still need to do a video about that and i will at some point uh, or you need to take it to people with experience in grading and um, get their opinion on what the grade of it is so then you have confident confidence uh, sending it in so uh, my final tip about all of this is um, you know because i've talked about this before where people say well it's a lucky find and there's no doubt about there is luck to it but look at all the different things that i did to influence being in a situation that i would have luck 
you know, from posting the ad to persisting with the person to asking if they had comic books to, by the way, another thing is putting yourself in situations where the conditions might not always be comfortable. I, I mean, it was freezing. I mean, this was in the dead of winter in Syracuse outside in a trailer. Yeah, I was in the trailer, but the, there was wind coming in. My hands were freezing cold, even with gloves. So uh, going back again, you know, on another time with, you know, snow all over the place. So, you know, you have to be persistent and play the numbers game. That's my final tip. You have to play the numbers game. What I mean by that, when I play the numbers game, is you have to figure if you go out a hundred times and you keep asking for things that you want, that at some point you are going to, go, but just by chance, you are going to come across somebody who has those items, but you're never going to find them unless you ask and if you don't go out and try to find it. So play the odds. Eventually, you are going to hit a winner. I hope that motivates you. Go out, sourcing, get one of those ads up, find something that you could flip for hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, a thousand dollars. And when you flip that item, come back to this video if it motivated you and tell me what that item is that you sold. I'm excited to hear from all sorts of people now in the reselling community who are getting into comic books. I just talked to someone today, you know, who flipped the comic book that he bought for a dollar 30 and he sold it for over 30 bucks and he's super pumped up and he's just getting started. So you can do it. Um, you just got to be willing to take on a new task and start to learn. So I hope that this video is helpful for you. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. Let me know if you like the audio. I'm using a new microphone today that I used on my last live show, but I never did it on a video like this so i hope it's improved the audio quality i'm going to be looking to up things significantly on this channel as the um, as the next year goes by so i'm real excited about that and developing it so stick by hopefully you're going to notice and see a lot of uh, improvements and changes uh, also make sure you subscribe to this channel and let someone else know about it i'd love to now hit my goal is 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year but i'd love to get to 10,000. see if we could do that we're almost at 7,200, so pumped up about that and um, again i mentioned the facebook group that's in the description section check me out on instagram i've been posting a lot of comic book sales there recently you could see and learn from there as well so doing a lot of things across these different forums i'm about to go out to the new york state fair for one last time get some yummy unhealthy junk food and uh, enjoy the rest of the day with my son and um, you know do some shipping and some postings later so i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you back the next one everyone take care